It's Ardeth and Jerry time! Yay! You know we love to get together and show you our different takes on card making topics. And today we're talking about masking. This is one of the best little tricks in any card maker's toolkit, and there are so many ways to do it. We often think of using sticky notes or masking paper, but today I'm going to be masking with some simple shapes and a special type of permanent reusable masks. I'll show you some alternatives along the way so you can get the look with what you have. And of course, I'll give you a link so you can hop over to see what Jerry has to say about masking too. Let's get started. These masks I'm using could probably also be called stencils. A number of companies carry these types of masks and the ones I'm using come from a Colorful Life Designs. They come in sets of four different sizes and I've got the circles, the rectangles and the banner set. I stuck with basic shapes because I know I'll get the most use of them, but as I say, there are plenty of others available. Let's start simple with the circles and a bubbly design that works well for any happy occasion. I'm using the two smallest circles, my current favorite color combination and a blending brush. To create a really rounded look, I blend the lighter shade of green all around the edge of the circle. Because the circle is off the edge of my panel, I continue the blending as if the whole circle is there. The important thing is to put the most pressure on the outside of the circle, then let the pressure ease up as you move to the center. You want to leave an almost white highlight somewhere in the center of that circle, and this, along with the darker edges, is what is going to give you the look of dimension. To add depth to the edges, I grabbed a darker green ink and I came in just on the lower left side of the circle. Moving to the next one, I did the same thing with a smaller circle stencil and two blue inks. The lighter ink went down first around the edges and I made sure to leave that white highlight and then I did darker on the lower left. Then I moved on to my last color and another small circle, overlapping it just a bit. You could simplify this even further by just doing one in the center of your card as a grounding for your focal image or sentiment. So now I've got three circles but this definitely could use a little filling in I think. This set doesn't come with any smaller circles, so I created my own, more temporary stencil with my circle dies and a piece of cardstock, and I'll assign a color to each one and blend a few more circles, again with some overlap. I don't want to be contaminating my colors, and I can't really clean off a cardstock stencil, but this is quick and easy. Creating your own stencils with dies is a great alternative, especially if you have nesting sets of dies, and I've done this before with acetate too, which is reusable. And in the comments last week, a couple of you suggested making our own reusable die cut stencils with Yupo or laminated cardstock. I haven't tried those, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. Placement of these circles can be a bit of a challenge, so I tried to stick to the visual triangle rule to achieve some balance. I started with my three circles, which formed a triangle, but by adding more, that meant that I was trying to balance both size and color as well. I've got three of the indigo circles pretty well spaced out. I've got one large and two cut off smaller green circles and I think that cutting off the smaller ones helped to balance all the green of the largest one. And I've only got two blues but again because of the size of them I think they feel pretty balanced with the rest of the colors. I finished this card with my favorite birthday die cut stacked up in black along with some narrow black frames and a fairy garden gems from Crafty Meraki. My next card combines a couple of other masks with the largest circle mask. I've got the Simple Hill 2 mask here and I'm masking the bottom half of the circle opening so I can blend my sky. To make it more interesting, I'm using the Cloud Edger with my blue ink to create clouds. To move on to the ground, I leave the first mask in place and I line up the other half of the Simple Hill mask. I find the easiest way to make sure that they're perfectly lined up is to make sure that the edges are lined up to form that 6 inch square. Then I'm ready to blend the green ink onto the ground and it will meet up with the sky perfectly. To finish this card I added a little Altenew flower die cut and a paper rose sentiment along with more of the fairy garden gems. Now I'm going to show you two of the best features of these sets. The first feature is that the shapes are all cut with the same center point in the middle of the plastic. So when you line up the edge titles along the same side and stack them up, they create perfectly aligned frames. The second is that you also get the shapes that are cut from the centers and there's lots of ways to use those. I started by putting the smaller outside down on my cardstock and sticky mat. I lined up the edges of the stencil along the grid marks on the sticky mat, then placed the circle mask inside. I had put temporary adhesive on it, but you could use pixie spray. You just want it to stick down when you lift up the outer stencil. 
Then I put down the larger stencil, lining up the edges in the same way, and this created a frame around my circle mask that is evenly spaced all the way around. Of course you can do this with die cuts, but you may have to just eyeball for even spacing. I blended my lighter green ink all over the opening, and then I went back in with the darker ink just along the edges. This will give it a rounded look, almost like a pool noodle. You could achieve a similar look with a large green die cut circle with a smaller white one on top, but this way uses less cardstock and it forms a perfect base for a pretty spring wreath made with crafty Meraki Margaret flowers and a big birthday sentiment. Let's move on to the rectangles. These are perfectly sized to give you even frames on your A2 card panels, and again, this is a nice alternative to adding layers to your cards. And again, you can create something like this with rectangle dies that you may already have. I'm going to double up this stencil with the boho medallion stencil, but rather than centering it this time, I placed the medallion off the bottom edge with the top of the pattern about two-thirds of the way up my panel. I added tape to hold it in place since it's not actually touching the sticky mat anywhere. Then I removed the boho stencil and flipped the sticky mat around, and this time I lined up the medallion so that the center dot overlapped with the one I'd already blended. This will give me a nice clean pattern with no overlap, but don't worry, this was my second try. On the first one, I didn't think it through, and I ended up with a very ugly overlap area. And don't forget that nice crisp white frame around the edges. It's almost as if I had created smaller panels and put them onto a white card base. Now I didn't get rid of that overlapped panel. I finished both cards in similar ways. The one with no overlap got a black waffle flower thank you sentiment, and the one with that ugly overlap area got the same sentiment, but with the shadow, so that the overlap area wasn't visible. We're going to come back to the rectangles in a minute, but first, I used the banner masks to make a couple of designs. For the first one, I used that largest rectangle again to keep the white frame around my design, and I turned the banners upside down to become modern Christmas trees, and I blended three colors of ink through. Changing the heights of these triangles is really easy. I just let the bases hang off the bottom edge of my panel, but if you were working in the center of your card, you could easily mask off the bottoms for similar results. Another thing you can do is change the angle of the triangle by masking off one side from tip to the base. This is another way to get more from these shapes, and you could do it with the rectangles to make squares or the circles to make semicircles if you wanted. I worked my way across my panel of cardstock, filling it in with trees of different heights and overlapping them until I was happy. These translucent inks give a look of multiple layers, which is really neat. To finish this one, I stamped a lovely big Christmas sentiment from Penguin Palace Stamps, along with some gold splatter and some gems. And since I have that sentiment stamp out, I created a few extras. This is part of my new leftovers with purpose habit, which I talked about in a recent video, and I'll put them in the back of the stamp pocket for now. And at Christmas, I know I'm going to be so happy to have them there, ready to go. For this card, I'm going to use the banners as banners. They're a little big to fit many of them on a card at a time, and I want a lot of them, so I'm going to use this big circle mask to help. I placed it on my panel, and that will basically become the string that my banners are going on. These triangles are different sizes, but they all have the same angles, so that means I can use three of these to create the same size and shape of banners on my string, and that saves me having to clean between colors. This gives me more flexibility when it comes to spacing. I worked through my colors, filling in the garland until I was happy. These ones are all pretty much the same size, and I'll show you another option in a minute, but before I removed that circle mask, I got out a Copic Multiliner and I traced along the edge. I cleaned the circle and placed it down in the other corner, and this time I made all the little banners different sizes, just to show that there are options and to add a little interest. I went back in and did one more garland, and I finished this one with an MFT Happy Birthday Sentiment and some Arctic Illusion Gems. My final idea was to spin one of the rectangle stencils. I have the Stencils 360s tool that's designed to help you spin circular stencils to create designs. And I've got a playlist that goes into more depth about the tool, how it works, and how to get more from it, and I'll link that right here. I like to use it with certain 6-inch square stencils, and I thought it would be fun to try it with the rectangles. I taped the stencil into the guide, and I blended my ink onto it. I went heavy on the outside and let it fade as I got to the center, and that's going to give me a really neat layered look as I turn the stencil. The guide has a little narrow engraved into it, and I use that to turn it to the next angle. This will give me a precise and even design, and as I say, if you want to know more about this tool, please take a look at my Stencils 360 playlist. 
I worked my way all around, blending ink through again and again until I completed the pattern. The result is a little like a spirograph, and instead of blending ink through, you could use a pen or a marker and draw the outline each time for a different look. Now this is pretty, but I've got more rectangles, so I was able to use the next size down and my blue ink to create an inner design. I started with a 6 by 6 inch panel of cardstock, and that's going to give me a panel bigger than a card front, and that will allow me to choose which part of it I want to use. I went down another size to the next rectangle, and I did the whole process again with my green ink. Once again, you could do this with a homemade die cut stencil. You would just need to make sure that your rectangles are centered so that they fit together. To finish this one, I inlaid a Simon Says Stamp Happy Birthday die cut, and I added some Arctic Illusion gems. Masking is a basic skill that allows us to create the look of dimension and layers with just ink and our masks. Whether you use post-it notes or masking paper or permanent, reusable masks, you'll end up with some amazing results. Now it's time to head over to Jerry's channel, where she's talking about DIY masks with a scary twist. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time!